Hey, what's up? And welcome to She Is The Music At Home series. This is the first lesson. I'm Emily Warren here to talk about the foundations of recording. It is an honor to be here. Thank you, She Is The Music and Rhea for setting this up for a million reasons and thank you for including me. Um, I have to start by saying that <clears throat> earlier I was just checking to make sure everything was working in preparation for this and it wasn't. I couldn't get sound out of my microphone. Uh, and what was supposed to be five minutes turned into an hour <laughs> of trying to figure that out. And I wanted to share that because that happens to me often enough that it's worth talking about. And um, really just that happen. just to say that that happens, uh, YouTube is a great resource for helping. If you have any friends that record, um, that can always be really helpful. They can kind of think of things that you're maybe not thinking of. Sometimes it's as simple as just restarting the computer. Um, sometimes something's not plugged in and then sometimes it's something more nuanced, like something's not getting sent power, um, any number of things, which it feels like it's a different thing every time. But I'm sharing that because I used to be in a place where I would turn on the computer when I had an idea and it would go wrong. I just couldn't get it to work and I would get so frustrated and lose the idea completely. So one, I think it's probably a good idea to get yourself up and running and get really comfortable with it before you have an idea so that when the idea comes, you can just sit down and try and get things working quickly. Uh, and two, just try and not get frustrated. This stuff can be frustrating because there's it looks complicated and it can be complicated, but it's also like once you have a grasp of it, um, it gets a lot easier. It's not as scary as it looks. Um, so all that being said, um, a little bit of background about me and my own recording journey. Um, I had a class in my middle school where they were showing us GarageBand. This was like kind of my first introduction to any recording at all. I'd been kind of playing piano and writing songs just a little bit, but <clears throat> GarageBand is what really opened the can of worms for me. And if any of you have not messed around with GarageBand, I think that's an amazing place to start because it's kind of like the most basic, clear, user-friendly version of everything that I'm going to be talking about today and that the rest of the people in this series are going to be going into more detail on. GarageBand is an amazing place to start because it has a lot of these tools um, that these other DAWs, D-A-Ws, we're gonna talk about that in a second. It has a lot of the tools that the other software has. And so if you start with GarageBand, you kind of learn your footing so that when you then switch over to whatever you choose, um, you kind of know the ropes a little bit. I'm gonna take a sip here. <sighs> okay. So why is it important to know how to record yourself? Um, there are a lot of answers to this question. I think, first of all, even if you are watching this and thinking, I want to be a songwriter, I want to be an artist, I'm never really going to be sitting at the front of the room, hopefully someone else will be doing that. Knowing this is still really important because, as, by the way, especially as a female, uh, because even if you don't see yourself sitting at the computer, at the front of the room, being able to use actual language to describe what you want done is hugely important um, for so many reasons. Frankly, the main one is because you'll be taken more seriously. And as a female who's been in a million rooms, and obviously this is getting better as the times are changing, but uh, sometimes you really have to prove yourself as a female to be taken seriously. And one of the awesome ways to do that is to just know what the hell you're talking about when it comes to recording stuff. Um, that has been such an asset to me to describe like when you're hearing, when you do a vocal and something about it isn't right and it's like an EQ thing, if you know how to actually describe that and get it done in a way that's not just like abstract language, that's helpful, it moves things along and it helps honestly people taking you seriously. So. That's a great thing to do for that reason. Um, another reason is in my own experience, there's been times when a vocal needs to get done and I'm by myself or I'm traveling or 
the story I was thinking of today as I was thinking about this is the song I did with a band called Friendship called Capsize uh, when we went in to do the final vocals. I don't even remember what happened. The engineer didn't show up or wasn't available or something. Um, and I was able to run the session and actually recorded and comped and did all the vocals myself, um, which was awesome for a million reasons. And those are the vocals on the record. So that was great and feels good. And another awesome reason is, especially if, um, like me, you're planning to sing on some of these records or sing on some of the demos, if you want to do like 5 million takes, but the person who's recording you is getting impatient at take number 4 million, this way you can kind of take it home and try things and do whatever you want and take as long as you want and comp it to be something that you like um, without having to kind of give that up to someone else or even put that on someone else. So it's such a good skill to have, especially um, just recording vocals, even if you only go that far, which is pretty much as far as I've gone. Uh, it's just such an asset and such a great thing to do, even if it doesn't seem like a priority. It's great and it will be helpful, especially in this time when everyone's stuck at home. There's like, if you can get your vocals sounding good on a demo, like it's out of here. Um, okay, so basic terms. I think I've jumped ahead on some of this, so I'm going to reel it back in and talk about what some of the basic terminology is. So, <clears throat> oh, and these are also, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. These are also gonna be in the PDF that you got that have uh, the setups and the different tiers and the different pricing of the setups. Uh, a lot of its language will be in there as well. So the first one is DAW, D-A-W, which stands for Digital Audio Workspace <laughs> Workstation. I had to look <laughs> close enough. Um, and this is basically the software that you'll use. So GarageBand is a baby version of this. Um, and Logic is kind of the next step of GarageBand. I mean, it's created, they're both created by the same people. And Logic is like, if you know GarageBand really well, Logic is the natural next step. And I would say Logic is what most people use. Um, I don't use it. And a lot of people don't use it, but Logic is kind of like the, the standard in pop sessions I've found. Um, and that's good for making beats and kind of good for doing vocals and all this kind of stuff. It's like a general, I would say, baseline, good at, pretty good at everything um, software. So that's a good place to start. Um, pretty sure Alex Hope, who's doing the next lesson, uses Logic. Yeah, she does. And she's the best. I love her. Alex, I love you. Okay, <laughs> next, uh, there's a lot actually, but I'm just gonna name the top ones. Next is Pro Tools, which is what I use. And Pro Tools is the industry standard for audio recording. It has the highest quality audio recording. So if you're thinking you're gonna just do vocals, um, Pro Tools is probably the one to do, which is why I use it. Um, I don't think it's great for making tracks i think some people do do that um i also know that people a lot of producers like get pissed when people are using pro tools to do tracks because when they have to transfer over it's annoying but a lot of producers who use logic switch over to pro tools when it's time to do vocals um and that's kind of what you'll see in like the big studios there will always be vocals going through pro tools and stuff like that so if you're thinking just vocals uh pro tools is probably the way to go and then the last one i'm going to mention is ableton which everyone loves. Um, it's really good for making beats and tracks. Apparently it's, I, I haven't used it, but apparently it's really good with like, yeah, if you just want to make a track, um, that's like a really intuitive, easy DAW to go with. Um, so you got your pick. It kind of depends what you're after. Logic is a good overall. Pro Tools is the best for audio and vocal recording. And Ableton is the best for making beats and tracks. So whatever kind of floats your boat is what you should choose. And then you got some, some uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word. Some outliers using like Cubase and Fruity Loops and things like that, which you may or may not have heard of, but are very unusual. But Ian Kirkpatrick 
who's a friend and who I think is the best producer uses Cubase. So that's an option. I don't know anything about it, but that's an option. There's a lot of options. You can look into it and see um, what you're after. But again, um, GarageBand, if you haven't messed with it, is an awesome place to start because it's just like the baby version of all of these things. Um, it's free and it's just a good place to start. Even if you just mess with it for a day or a week, if you haven't yet, um, it can kind of like teach you what some of these things are without getting too technical. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is plugins. So plugins are things that run through the DAWs. Um, an example is like reverb, which you would put once you record a vocal or when you're recording a vocal, you would put a reverb plugin on the vocal and that's what would create an echo or delay really creates an echo. Reverb kind of creates a, um, how to describe it? Like literally it's called like a wetness. So if you put reverb on something, it's wet. If you take reverb off, it's dry. Um, that is probably easiest to explain if you just mess around with it. Again, that's something you can mess around with in GarageBand before you um, kind of pull the trigger on any of this. But you'll see if you turn reverb all the way up, you can see what that does. And if you turn delay all the way up, you can see what that does. Um, plugins are really important, um, especially when you're not trying to spend a lot of money because basically a lot of these there are versions of the plugins like there are versions of reverb and delay and compressors that are hardware that are physical things that you can buy uh, but the plugins do that within the computer so obviously the difference between software and hardware software is something that's in the computer and hardware is something that's like physical in your studio um, and so when you get super advanced with recording you might want to buy a nice compressor to make your vocals sound even better with the hardware, but you can fake a lot of this stuff with the software, with the plugins. So plugins are really important. Um, finding the right ones is really important. Um, a lot of them have trials, so you can kind of see what you like um, before you, again, before you buy it. Um, but yeah, plugins can kind of take like a pretty average sounding vocal and take it to the next level. Auto-Tune's another plugin that is widely used um, so yeah, they're important to figure out. I think that the later lessons are going to get more into this in depth, but just general overview, a plugin is something that you put on the track that is software. Plugin is software that you put on the track and make it sound better. I don't know if I'm making any sense. Hopefully I am. Um, the next thing is monitors. This is a funny one because it's got a dual meaning, but Monitors are one, the big speakers that you have at the front of the room. I can show you, I got some big boys in here. Let's see if I can, that over there is a monitor, <laughs> speaker type situation. Hopefully I didn't unplug things just then. Um, and a monitor is also the term that is used for the screen. So like the computer screen that you're running your session on. So. That's what that term means. It means two things. Um, monitors, I believe this is also on the PDF that you guys got um, that shows you different pricing. Monitors can go, are one of the things that can go from like really cheap to insanely expensive. Um, if you're just like recording for yourself and trying to keep it simple, you really don't need to splurge crazy on that. Um, people start splurging when they're like mixing their own records and uh, in rooms that are sound treated and where it's like you really need the monitors to be on point because you're sending it in like that. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're just doing your thing at home, a good pair of headphones and some good enough monitors will do the trick to get started for sure. Um, what else? Okay, microphones. Microphones are another crazy thing that have a crazy range of pricing. Um, you can find like a tiny USB microphone on Amazon that's not going to sound very good for like 20 bucks. And then you could spend like tens of thousands of dollars on like a super crispy microphone. Um, again, actually, I wanted to show this. This microphone is amazing. I don't think this is on your PDF. This is an SM7. I think it's like 300 bucks, which is not crazy. Um, 
but still expensive, but not crazy compared to like what the really nice ones cost. Uh, and this mic is amazing. And so many records that we all know and love have been recorded on this microphone, like classics, like Michael Jackson recorded on this. Um, just so many. I mean, if you look up this mic, you'll see. So I love this microphone because it can take a beating. It's great for in the room. So like when I have people here recording, I just like, this is kind of by the couch. Um, and it's great to just have, so you can like sing whatever idea in and actually make it sound really good with plugins or whatever. So I do love this mic, but that to really just say like, I have kind of a, let's see if you can see it. I got a fancy mic over here, which is amazing and so good for pop demo vocals and it's a Sony and it's amazing, but I also equally love this way, way, way cheaper and great microphone. I recorded my album on that. I think it's got a really warm, like old school classic sound and yeah, but um, there are all kinds of different types of microphones. And the main one for vocals is a condenser microphone. Um, I don't know if I should get so into the nitty gritty of what that means, except for that that's kind of the standard, um, seeing what I wrote here. Yeah. Yeah. A condenser has a, sorry. I keep losing my place here. Yeah, condenser is what you're mostly gonna see in studios. It has a, a huge frequency range and it's very sensitive. So when you hear like really crispy pop vocals, they're generally, I mean, they're pretty much all recorded on a condenser microphone. Um, there's other types of microphones like ribbon and stuff like that, which are more used for recording like piano or instruments or things like that. Whoops. But you don't need to worry about that really. Um, I think the PDF that Clint put together that you guys should all have has a really good range of different microphones. Um, I'm tossing in the SM7 to be considered because I think it's amazing. Have I spoken enough about the SM7? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, mics, you can kind of, again, plugins come in at this point because whatever your mic sounds like, you can kind of mess with it with the plugins and make it sound good enough or great even. Um, an XLR cable. An XLR cable is a cable that goes into the microphone. So if you see this microphone, for example, has three prongs. So the XLR cable has yeah, three holes, and on the other end it has three prongs, and that goes into the hardware that then connects it to your computer, which we'll get to in a second. But basically all you need to know is that an XLR cable connects the microphone to your computer, ultimately. Um, preamp. Preamp and audio interface. I'm putting these two things together because I'm gonna show them to you here and mine are combined. But basically the audio interface is, well actually, let me start with the preamp. The preamp is the piece of hardware that boosts the signal from the microphone. So you need a preamp because if you sang into a microphone and didn't have it going through a preamp, the signal would be so low that you wouldn't hear it. So a preamp is important. Um, and the audio interface is the hardware that basically connects the mic or, the ins or, or an instrument to your computer. So um, I'm gonna just show you this now. It'll be easier to explain while you're looking at it. Hang on. Okay. So I'm trying to see if you can see this. And I can't see anything. Okay, this is my Apollo. That's what this piece of hardware is at the top. And it's both an audio interface and a preamp. So basically, I have my mic cable, this mic. This is hard to do upside down. This mic with the cable is running through the back of this, which I'm not gonna show you because it's a disaster of tangled cables back there. Um, and then it comes here through the preamps, uh, through the audio interface, which has a preamp on it. So 
I don't know if you can see exactly. This knob says preamp on it. That's how I change the level. Actually, I'm gonna show you this. So this is the signal of the microphone that I'm holding right now. Right here. Woo, so when I talk into it, woo, it's going up to the red. So I'm gonna turn the preamp down a little bit because that signal is too hot. So that's about, that's about right. You can see me talking into it. You can see the signal going up and you can control how much is coming in with the preamp here. I hope you can see all this. <clears throat> I'm praying that just worked. Okay. So that's the preamp and the audio interface. Again, those, there's examples of that on the PDF um, of all different price ranges um for different audio interfaces and preamps but you're pretty much unless you get a usb mic um you're gonna need an audio interface to connect mic or a guitar or whatever it is you're using uh into the computer to then run it through pro tools or logic or ableton or whatever you choose to use um trying to see what else i wanted to talk about Okay, so signal flow. This is, this is kind of the last thing I'm gonna go over. Um, signal flow basically refers to the signal, where it goes from the input to the output. So for me, signal flow, with what I just showed you, goes into this microphone, that's the input, down the mic cable, into the audio interface slash preamp, which then connects it by another cable, which I didn't show you, which I should, I can't show you because it's plugged into the computer, uh, into the computer, which then comes either out of this, the monitors, which is the big speakers or the headphones, if I have my headphones plugged in. So again, signal flow is mic to the preamp slash audio interface into the computer out of the monitors or headphones. Um, yeah. So I hope that that all made sense. I feel like I just word vomited everything, but I wanted to share my screen with you and just show you, I'm using Pro Tools, so I just wanna show you what that looks like and record a little something. Okay, you can see my screen. This was me testing it, I'm gonna delete that. Okay, so you can see right here, this is my signal coming in. You have to press, I mean, they're gonna get into this in later ones, but you have to record enable the track. So for me on Pro Tools, it's this button here. Now it's record enabled. Um, and let's say I'm gonna record something. So here we go. So I wanted to show you here that the signal is low. The waveform is low because I'm going pretty quiet. And then if I do louder, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, see, there's a huge signal flow right there. It's getting huge. All right, so this is the, yeah, there's the waveform. That's what that's called. So that's what I just recorded into here. If we listen back. Hang on, let me turn everything on. So I wanted to show you here that the signal is low, the waveform, is, yeah. You get it, <clears throat> I hope, if I explain myself well. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, trying to think if I forgot anything. Uh, I guess I will also say, which is why this uh, series is so cool and important. Um, I went to a music school in New York uh, at NYU called the Clive Davis Institute, which was amazing. Um, but it was kind of my first taste of how the music industry works in terms of uh, boys and girls. And what I mean by that is that the guys would kind of always meet up after class and get together and make beats together and work together. And the girls kind of always veered off on their own thing. Um, and what that means is, and what that meant for me is, you don't often feel like you have homies or good examples or people that you can reach out to 
girls, other girls that you can reach out to that can help you with this stuff. Um, and that is like a huge problem in the music industry because it's a self fulfilling prophecy of women not being in certain roles or not being taken seriously in certain roles. So I don't know why I'm saying that except for to say like, first of all, if you're here, thank you. That's awesome. That's like the first step in the right direction. You have Alex Hope and other geniuses coming up, but Alex is an amazing example of a female producer who's killing it. Um, so she's the best person to look to for this. Um, and I will tell you that when I'm in the room with her and making music with her, I feel the most um, able to express my ideas and share things with her uh, just because she's a fellow female and we need more of that. So support each other. Um, this is so cool that this is happening and so cool that you guys all tuned in because this is such an important thing. I hope this is the beginning of a long recording journey for all of you and thank you to all of you for watching this and tuning in and thank you also to she is the music and ria for making me a part of it i really appreciate it and i'm excited about what will come of this